Hello everybody, my name is Melissa Mercy Gray and I'm the coordinator of the Bachelor of Environmental Policy and Management, which we deliver out of the Department of Geography, Environment and Population. Before I start, I wanted to acknowledge and pay my respects to the Ghana people who are the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands we gather on, and also acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of the Ghana people to country, and we respect and value their past, present and ongoing connection to land and cultural beliefs. I'd like also to acknowledge any First Nations students and also all the Indigenous peoples over the years that I've worked with and learned from. Before I move on to talk about the actual degree, of course, it would be good to know who's actually delivering it. So let's start with myself. So I actually teach two first year courses. One is called Introduction to Geography, Environment and Population. And the second one is called Geographies of Globalization. And both of those courses sort of really think about how people work with nature, how they respond to the challenges and crises that we're facing, and how concepts like geography, um, environment and planning can help us understand how to redress them. So my skill area is generally in human geography, and I teach courses to do with sort of cultural engagement, community engagement, environmental impact assessment and environmental ethics. Outside of that, there's Associate Professor John Tibby, as you can see on that, that screen there. He's currently head of department, but he's a physical geographer and he delivers another one of the first year courses, which is a core course, which looks at the physical impacts of people on the, on the planet and how we basically, um, what are those key issues and crises. Associate Professor Douglas Bardsley is uh, very specialised in environmental management, environmental policy and management, and he teaches the core course at second year. He also co-teaches climate change with um, John Tibby, and he uh, raised the master's coordinator. So Doug uh, teaches both, I guess, human and environmental kind of facets of environmental policy and management. Yan Tan, Associate Professor Yan Tan, she runs one of our first year courses called Social Science Techniques, which is also run at second year level. And her expertise is in migration and development and also population. And she runs uh, the internship sometimes and coordinates a lot of those kind of courses. Jung Ho, Dr. Jung Ho Su, he works with us. He's an environmental economist. Uh, he does economic geography. He runs the fourth uh, first year course which is called Environment and Economy, um, basically looking at the ways in which we uh, economies, I guess, impact the environment and how economic imperatives affect our ability to redress, redress those issues. A bit later on, um, uh, Jung Ho also runs a course called Tourism and the Environment. But finally, and not, not least, though, we have Lirian, Lirian, Dr. Lirian Daniel. Um, she helps us deliver courses in urban sustainability, cities and sustainability, and um, has expertise, particularly in housing. She works for the Centre for Housing Research. And so she runs a number of courses um, with other members of staff and in her own right. So it's a very um, dynamic team. We have a lot of um, variety across the expertise and all of us are very research active. So you get the opportunity of having the results of our research input into the teaching that we do. So if you're talking about the teaching, then what does make, you know, the Bachelor of Environmental Policy and Management unique? I think one of the really key things is that unlike, we don't just focus on the problems, we provide ideas around the solutions. How do we address and resolve the pressing environmental and social challenges we face today? Sustainability is at the core of, I guess, the uh, teaching that we do. How can we live on the planet? How can we reduce our footprint? But how can we do that in ways where we still have lives that we want to lead? Another thing that we do is offer internships and study tours, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But one of the other things that's really important about our pro program is that we offer graduates the ability to hit the ground running uh, job ready. So we teach you real life tasks as we're going through the degree on real life problems as they're arising. And you benefit from that incorporation of our world leading research into the classroom. And so you really get um, some good value there. And of course, the graduates that we have, they're guaranteed to have very interesting jobs, I might say very well paid jobs, 
um, get to travel worldwide. And there's a diversity of things that you can do. So with, with this kind of degree, you might start off working as a media policy advisor to the Greens, and you might end up training Aboriginal rangers on country, you might end up an academic, but there'll be a lot of things that you will be qualified to do. So in terms of, I guess, building uh, those things that you're going to be looking at as an environmental policy and management student, some of the key themes are we're going to teach you the different ways humans interact with the environment, show you different approaches to conservation and sustainability. How do you actually create policy and plans for managing real life um, problems? We do look at those solutions. We take you through, as I said, an international array of um, contexts, examples and issues. And particularly, we develop your understanding of climate change, urbanisation, population growth, resource scarcity and biodiversity. Now, in terms of the degree structure, what you need to look at is, you know, the generic sort of structure, which you can find here. Overall, you complete 70 units of courses um, and at least 12 units and no more than 24 at level one and at least 24 of uh, level three courses. You need to do an arts competency project or, or unit. And then for us, you know, as part of the degree, you need to complete 36 units of environmental policy and management courses. And they're essentially the core. You then get to do a minor. So the minor is up to 18 units. And that gives you an opportunity to play around a bit. You might go and do a minor in media. You might do a minor in language. You might do it in something like biological sciences. So there's a lot of choice there. Um, and then you've got electives. Now, in terms of the study plan, you can see here, you get the study plan. And if you go specifically to this PDF, it'll actually give you the actual study plan, which looks like this. And so you can see these are the four courses that we do, geographies of globalisation, physical geography and human environmental impacts, economy, environment and place, and introduction to geography, environment and population. These are the four courses that you'll do with us. They're core courses and then you move into other core courses as you move through the year levels. So there's lots of uh, very interesting courses in our degree. And then outside of that, you have other choices. So you can diversify. As I said, these are the four courses that you will study. Um, at the first year, I guess we've got a number of core themes that we explore in those four subjects. One core theme is to introduce you to the core concepts in the discipline of geography, space, place, um, scale, geography itself, what does it mean, and how it might be useful to building your work um, readiness. What it obviously is environmental management um, in John's course about physical impacts will introduce you to those issues, but we also introduce you to the idea that they can be managed. So what does environmental management and policy actually look like? Another key dim dimension is looking at the relationship between people, environment, population, it's the core driving relationship that we all have in our lives. And we sort of look at all the work that's been done on that, particularly uh, we, we discuss the theme of sustainability. So what does that mean? What does economic sustainability mean? What does cultural sustainability mean? What is environmental sustainability? What's social sustainability? And specifically in regards to that, what are the problems and what solutions are needed? What solutions are there already? Key skills that you'll develop are critical thinking, the capacity to analyse and join the dots between different domains and disciplines to create solutions, problem solving and planning, which is an essential part of policy and management, how to work in teams, how to develop strategies. Uh, because we're in a geographical space, we're going to do a lot of work around the, what we call socio-ecological knowledge, how do different knowledge systems work, what knowledge do we need, and how do we interact with those knowledges to resolve things like conflict and power and injustice to create socially just conservation um, initiatives. And we will be developing a digital literacy, even for things like you know, uh, mapping and GIS skills through to just being able to develop a website um, and, and use um, all the sort of um, tools that you can to be um, very diverse and skilled. And one thing's important to note is that we actually have gone out and asked our employers, what do you want in the people that you employ? And these are the kind of skills that have come back and said, 
are really important in terms of progressing graduate employability. So you can be assured that we are building those skills in specifically response to what um, people say they want and need. I just want to say a little bit about assessment. Assessment is obviously, you know, um, something we all have to live with. It's something that you do in order to get past the course and pass it or better. But one of the things that we try and do is make assessments really interesting. And there's a thing called authentic assessment or aligned assessment, where basically instead of like um, just writing an essay, we try and fashion assessment that mimics or uh, is basically um, doing the thing that you might have to do in real life. So for example, I teach a course called environmental impact assessment. In that, I could ask you to write an essay about environmental impact assessment, but what I do instead is I provide a real life case study and your major assessment is doing an actual environmental impact assessment. It's desktop, but it still mimics the real thing. And all of us that teach the courses will do that. So if you're doing something around urban planning, one of the assignments might be to do uh, an urban plan based on a case study, et cetera. The other things that we do is, is provide a mixture of written, digital and verbal assessments so that by the time you graduate, you are going to be able to know how to write. You will know how to do research. You will know how to develop a website. You will be digitally literate. You will be able to give a good presentation at a conference or at work and you will be able to write an excellent report. So those are the sorts of things that we really try and focus on in our assessments so that you've um, got a lot of depth and richness in the skills that you develop over time, but also that you have attempted to do real life tasks, uh, even though they're in a classroom setting. I think the other thing that's a lot of fun about our course is that we have a number of other opportunities. We have an internship scheme and what we do basically is we work with a lot of employers um, and then those employers will basically take one of you, a student, for three months and you work in the workplace on a project that's of relevance to that particular company or institution or government. And then at the end of it, you write about a 5,000 word essay and they get a nice report. But often what happens is, well, what basically happens is you get three months work experience but you also all often end up, students have ended up working in the places that they've internshiped with, or um, they've developed good networks which stand them in good stead. So that's one, one aspect, the internship program. It's not compulsory, but a lot of students really like it because of the work kind of experience and exposure that it gives you. Um, uh, we also offer a number of study tours. So we have a study tour in geography, uh, which goes to Freiburg, which is around urban sustainability and sustainable cities. But in the school and in the faculty, there are other study tours as well. Some that go to Singapore for politics, others through anthropology and development studies that go to Vietnam. And you'll be able to take those and have this degree as well. So um, it gives you a bit of opportunity. And we also have summer scholarships. So if you want to go and work with an academic over summer, you get paid to do it for five weeks or you get an honorarium and you get to work on a proper research project, probably get a paper out of it. But another, it's another form of work experience that a lot of students have really enjoyed uh, developing a little bit more an idea around how to do some of this cutting edge research that we're all doing and being, and being part of it. Overall, the actual, uh, you know, the actual structure, the actual degree is very diverse in and of itself. We do physical geography, human geography, economic geography, bits of cultural geography. We do have skills courses, environmental impact assessment, introduction to geography and geographical information systems and social science techniques. So there's something for everyone, although not everyone's going to love all of it. There's going to be something that's really interesting for all of you as you move through the degree. So this is just some examples of the diversity here from food security and climate change, tourism and environment, impact assessment courses, indigenous courses, sustainability courses, coastal management, um, and some migration, population and health courses. Some of them really kind of like indigenous people's environment, focuses quite a lot on the Australian context, something like migration and development, you know, the world's your oyster. So you can really like get an idea of how geography, how place and scale, how that relationship between people and environment and the development of policy around it um, plays out 
from, from the local to the international stage. As I said, there's a lot of diverse career paths. You can, you know, go work in media. You can work for all levels of government. You can go and work for the United Nations. You could go and work for the United Nations Environment Program, the World Conservation um, Commission on Protected Areas. You could go work for politics um, or media, uh, science journalism, community development, go and work for non-government organisations, go work for Indigenous or First Nations groups. You can join government or environmental consulting firms. Our graduates have gone mining companies, you know, the fishing companies. Um, our graduates have gone to work in all of those places and more. You can see just very two recent ones here, Ethan and Beck both working at this Mott McDonald as a company, Resilience East is sort of like a local government alliance. I've got students from all over the place. In fact, we're developing a graduate success bank. And, um, you know, if you ever wanted to know the kind of jobs that people could do, come and see me. I can give you a list of like 50 people and they're all doing different jobs, but they all did our degree. And of course, you get to travel the world. As I said before, we like really very international in scope as well as local. Um, and we look at those big ticket issues like climate change, urbanisation, migration, biodiversity loss. How do we respond to these big challenges and how do we embed that in policy and how do we make that culturally palatable so we can achieve that behavioural and institutional change we need to effectively save the planet and all of the societies that live on it. And I guess lastly, a little bit of a plug, it's important to have fun at university. There is this Geography and Development Society. It was set up by a bunch of geography students from Geography and Development Studies a couple of years ago. This is their Facebook website. There's a lot of really interesting information um, available. They do lots of fun things from pub crawls through to professional development panels. So um, it's an ongoing feast of activities. I'd encourage you to get involved. Uh, and indeed drive some things yourself. But it's good to get involved in the societies um, within the university. It's a good way of meeting people, developing friendships, but also to, to use um, as a point of contact moving through your degrees. Now, a little bit of housekeeping. That was my, like, you know, whistles and bells, um, what's going to happen in the degree. Of course, doing a degree is a little bit more logistically, um, you know, mundane, but still important. So the one thing you need to know is that most of your courses are going to be, all of them, going to be delivered through this My Uni Canvas system. If you're not familiar with it, familiarise yourself with it. This You'll, you'll receive a dashboard. You'll enrol in your courses. For each course, there'll be a little link like this. You'll go into each one of those and that will show you what you need to do. And that will also give you all the information you need, your coordinators details, the readings, the tasks, the recordings of the lectures, uh, links to learning activities or YouTube clips, etc. Now, academic staff don't actually provide assistance with the technicalities of my uni. Like if you can't open the my uni or you're not enrolled properly or something, go look at my uni help. If you're worried about a reading or you want to ask a question about the curricula, use the, use the discussion boards. And a lot of academics will use the email function of my uni to communicate with you. I'm certainly one of them. Um, so read all those announcements particularly and the notifications and have a check through, as you can see, how can you make sure you can access every one of your courses? If you are having problems though, um, there's lots of support. You can ring people. You can email the service desk. They'll email you back instantly. You can go into the hub and ask at Ask Central what you need to do. You can put an online query through this uh, website here. And there are a lot of co um, community like guides here, which will, which will, you know, got like most used, used questions where you can actually chat in Canvas itself if your coordinator is amenable to that. So my uni is really central to you actually expediting the actual learning process. Just put this in here. Uh, I think we're all, all supposed to put this in here. It's important for you also to know that um, there's a point at which you can withdraw from um, your degree or your courses without paying for it. That's 24th of March. It's called the census date. After that, you can still withdraw without failing. You still have to pay for the course. It'll still be in your debt, but 
you can withdraw without fail. That's Friday the 6th of May. Any time after that, if you don't pass the course, you don't pass the course and you still, you still um, fail it. Um, and then there's critical dates and academic, academic year dates. Click on those links, have a look to make sure that you're across when semester starts, when it finishes and all those sorts of things. Here's some additional um, support systems, um, academic mentors, peer assisted study, writing centres, maths learning centres, studiosity and counselling, et cetera. Um, and then Ask Adelaide Arts. This is quite important. These people are really friendly. If you have any questions at all, just ask them uh, what's happening, what, what you should be doing. Staying connected is very, very important. Uh, so again, we have a Facebook site, Faculty of Arts site, uh, and all those sorts of things as well. But basically, um, that's sort of the end of it. Just, you know, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me as the coordinator or any of the staff who are coordinating the courses that you're enrolled in. Make sure that you go and talk to anyone at Ask Adelaide. They're very friendly. Um, a value, the best thing to do is to just surf through the stuff and get yourself familiar with how it works. Um, have a lot of fun and good luck uh, with the degree and all of your other courses. I hope you enjoy it. And I look forward to seeing some of you in some of the courses uh, this semester and into the future.